Hey, what's going on, everybody? And welcome back to the channel today for a very, very special interview. Oh, man, for all my power folks, I know you all are waiting for this one here. And I always talk about this character and I always accredit the fantastic work by this actor. And I think it's only well fitting that we had a chance to talk to her and talk all things Detective Shannon Burke. I introduce to you all Shanley Caswell. Shanley, how are you doing today? Hi, thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to finally uh, talk about Shannon from Shannon's point of view, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, we got a chance to meet um, earlier this year at the uh, season two premiere. Um, and uh, I remember we had a really interesting conversation. And I'll just, you know, now that the season's over, I remember the one thing you said to me was like, how have you seen so much already? And you and we haven't seen We were it. talking about that. You know, you also have to remember, we shoot it like a year before it, it is airing that specific episode. So my memory just doesn't really remember what happened in episode two to episode four. And you were talking about things. And I was like, did that happen? I don't actually even remember that. <laughs> and then I realized that you had seen more than us. And I was like, dang, I, I, I he, he knows more about this show than I do. And you're doing the <laughs> interviews and I like answering these questions. And talking about your character, what you experienced the year before, but you're filming the next season already. So you're like splitting your mind between two right. different seasons. It's just, it's just a, it's um, hard. <laughs> I will absolutely have to be more considerate of that going forward. <laughs> I, I, I'm thinking I'm coming in, making sure I'm fully prepped and realizing I'm like causing more of a, t a tanglement within all of the spaghetti of knowledge. Theater, so. <laughs> yeah, especially with the with the world of uh, power where things are like intertwined and relationships change so much. I'm like, is that where we were in our relationship? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> um, but overall, what 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 has the experience been uh, being a part of the power universe? Um, you know, obviously with your cast members, which is family. Everyone speaks about family. Uh, your writers, your writers, your directors, um, all the members of the other shows, and then obviously the audience. What has this journey been for you so far? It's really crazy entering um, a universe that has such an established fan base because it's already built in, and people are already. Um, already know your character, know the know the power universe so well that they already have opinions about your character before they ever uh, really even watch the show. Um, the, the audience's reactions and their uh, passion for the show is just really spectacular to see. It makes it really fun every yeah. episode. It's like, I, I get really excited to have people see it. And, and um, so it's, it's like, um, it just totally, I, I get, I can't help myself from feeling excited as well. It's contagious. Yeah. Um, I will also say as for the power, just the Raising Canaan family, we had a little bit of a different experience because we started right before the pandemic pandemic yeah. happened. Um, we all had to go through this crazy stuff for filming, um, during that time. So in some ways that I feel like that bonded us because it was a really strange experience. Um, and uh, doing it all together, especially with the crew as well. I feel like we all just went through something insane. So it makes us feel a lot closer um, because of that. And also yeah. further in other ways, because we couldn't all hang out all the time. <laughs> so yeah. uh, it was strange, but yeah, it is definitely a family in the, in the power universe is really spectacular. Yeah, very loyal um, and very vocal. Uh, and very on that vocal. note, <laughs> and on that note, folks, because I know you want to, uh, you want me to get to the hard question, so I'm just going to get this question over with, and then we can go on with the interview. Now, when when we when we talked about when we talk about some of the most pivotal characters in all the power, the ones who really shake up every episode, every season, and then eventually they become the characters that folks just say. I hate that character. They got to go. <laughs> I hope they die. And I mean, we're talking about in the ranks of Cooper Sacks, Blanca mm -hmm. Rodriguez, Greg Knotts, and well, I think you're at the top of the list here as Shannon Burke. What has like. that response been for you knowing that you you are a character that folks hate amongst all characters? <laughs> um, it's been interesting. I, I think it's really fun because I think typically I've played just really likable characters. And so yeah. to get, be getting the DMs of people saying like, you really need to die. You're so annoying. <laughs> Um, it's different for me <laughs> and, and people coming up to me on the street, um, saying the exact same thing. Uh, so uh, it's been, it's really, it is really fun for me. Um, I just giggle, you know, it's, it's my job to be, to be annoying. Yeah. I've never been paid to be annoying before or be hated <laughs> so much before. Um, so that's been interesting. Uh, 
and to just see how much passion people have for yeah. it is is just really fun. it's really fun. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I promise I'm not that uh, frustrating in real life though. I'm, I'm nicer than that. Absolutely. You are a, an amazing person. This is why I have to c- continue to say this because the, folks, I know how passionate we are about the series, about the about the show, um the overall universe and these characters, but let's 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 be respectful at all times. It's okay to not like a character, but don't come in her DMs with anything crazy. This is a person. She has a real life and she's a sweetheart. And I just want to make sure everyone understands that that uh, Shanley is not Shannon. Shannon is not Shanley, and that's the separation here. Don't yeah. be trying to project. And if they want to do that, just remember that she used to play, uh, you know, somebody that was possessed on the Conjuring. So if they want to blur characters, just know that exactly. you can pull I'll, up. I'll come for you. I'll come for you. <laughs> <laughs> Me and my ghost. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Uh, yeah, no, everyone's been really respectful. It's always good. been about the characters. Um, it's it's just. It's just hilarious. It's just Good. hilarious how much people care care so much about these characters. Um, yeah. it's really it's really fun to see. Yeah, experience. yeah. So, so the one thing you know when we talked about in our interview be, before the season, and and a lot of things I was hinting at was that you know Detective Burke had got a lot of warning to ease off the case. We done heard from her dad, um, her uh, ex-partner or ex-girlfriend partner, um, and, and uh, Detective Dina uh, returns and, and and adds another aspect to it. Obviously, we're hearing from the police uh, chief and then obviously Howard himself. But there's been warning after warning after warning to say, hey, ease off of this. I, I simply want to know what is the ultimate motivation despite all of the warning and especially when 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 her dad you know she's coming from a generation of police officers and you know the the uh, uh, her dad spoke about the camaraderie and trusting your partner and you know having that bond and you know that's something you hear just across the board in in terms of the uh, the, the brothers and sisters in blue and saying you have to trust your partner because it's dangerous out there and that's a cardinal rule coming from her dad which her and her dad had that relationship, especially with the passing of uh, of her mother and sort of them kind of still grieving, but having that moment with them together, it seems to be if anybody had the had the voice to get through to her, it would have been her dad. And that still has mm-hmm. not stopped her. So yeah. what is truly f- fueling her right now? Yeah, I'm so glad you asked that, because a lot of the times I feel like it sometimes can feel almost like people just don't understand why she's trying so hard to uh, figure this out and to like possibly ruin somebody that we care about uh, their story, Howard's life. Um, I think she's, she is a female detective in the early nineties. She's young. Nobody thinks that she should be there. Nobody thinks that she has the right to be there. And she's followed the rules her whole career. She's done with the right thing. And when she finds out that her partner is doing something that's, not quite playing by the rules and maybe protecting this family that we were supposed to be actually, you know, finding things out about, uh, it interferes with our work. And so I think that that's what sparks it. I think having people tell her to back off when she knows that she's right, makes her dig her heels in deeper. It's like Mm -hmm. that itch that she, she needs to prove that she's right at this point. And it's almost like, yeah, everyone else thinks that she's crazed trying to figure this out. But for her, she she's like, I know I'm right. I need to figure this out. This is not okay. This is not how I was told this job was supposed to go. Um, so I can, you know, I, I it, it's something where I, I get why she just digs her heels in deeper and that she doesn't listen to the warnings because she knows that she is right. She wants to prove herself finally in her own right, away from her family, knowing that she is correct in this, knowing that she more morally is right in this um, at this moment. And so I think that, yeah, I think that that that's ultimately why she will she cannot and will not stop. Um, yeah. She has a point to prove and she has to prove herself. And that's ultimately like drives so many of us, right? Like if we need to prove ourselves, we will not stop, not stop. If, especially if people are telling us to back off, that makes, makes the fire um, burn a little more. Yeah. So, um, that's what I kind of connected with, with, with her. And I think everyone else can connect with, but it is still frustrating to see her still doing this over and over and over and over again, you know? Yeah. But yeah, because it's not a system designed for women, especially in this era, uh, era uh, designed for women to excel, you know, mm-hmm. uh, and and 
amongst all other things that could be explored with a woman being in the police force at this time. So I, I totally get it because that's all this character has only ever known is people saying no, no, no. And sit down and be quiet. Mm-hmm. There is nothing that would make me want to yell louder than if somebody said, sit down and be quiet and just yeah. follow, follow, get, keep your head straight. Yeah. So, you know, that would, that would make anyone go a little crazy and try to, try to, uh, burn it all down to the yeah so it to, to me what's interesting is that um the, the the characters i listed earlier in cooper Sachs, blanca rodriguez and greg knotts um they were just except for sax that's my favorite character ever <laughs> he's great um I, yeah uh I, I just yeah it's my favorite character i could talk about him forever mm-hmm. but uh one, one thing about these characters is that they have not been written to almost ever be likable. And when I think about how Courtney Kemp, Kemp handled uh, Michael Rainey Jr.'s character and Tariq, you know, all of the original Power series, just hated them. And she talked about how, you know, she wanted to make sure in Power Book 2 Ghost that she really um, sort of changed the narrative on his character to make him likable. And believe it or not, this cult following of a fan base actually got along with it at some point. Mm-hmm. And 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 the more, and this is why I really wanted to speak to you, because the more and more I feel like we tap into the psychology of this character, I think we start to, I think doors start to appear for fans to walk through to understand and to empathize, you know, why she is the person she is. I mean, again, you know, that moment with her and her dad and and, and speaking about losing her dad. And again, the, the scene with her and Detective of Dina where they were lovers, but they weren't allowed to be lovers. It wasn't mm-hmm. able to be something that could be on display. I mean, these are things now, you know, uh, that people can resonate with today, yeah. uh, which, you know, shows that there is humanity behind this character, even though she's just crazy and trying to take Detective Howard down. So mm-hmm. for me, just really quickly thinking forward, do you foresee sort of a change in the perception of this character from the fans and would you love that or would you like to continue to just be amongst the highest ranks of characters that folks just hate? <laughs> I mean, I love being, um, I love uh, the passion that with which people hate this character, but uh, I do think it's important to, I mean, everyone's human unless you're like a sociopath and everyone has a story. And I think that you can always emphasize with someone's story. And I also think it makes it more a more interesting story to know that there's a reason why she's not just annoying to be annoying sake. She's not just uh, investigating this because she wants to take Detective Howard down. She's investigating it because she feels like she has a moral obligation to. And she also has all these other reasons, all these other things going on, which we see in season two, which I thought was really, really important to have. Um, and there's, you know, a line in, in season two where she's with Adina and she said, um, she says, uh, I, I only got this job because of my family. And she's having this moment of vulnerability. So one of the only moments that we see her be vulnerable in the entire show is when she yeah. says that one line. And yeah. I was really, I thought that was really important. I fought for that to be in there because I think a lot of times you just see her painted with this one, um, you know, a, a color of paint mm-hmm. and, I wanted to show people that she is human and she has a reason why be, be, behind why she is so adamantly pursuing this uh, uh, fight to uh, uh, for how about about Howard. Yeah. And so um, I did think that's important. I always think it's important. I think stories like that are just more interesting to watch yeah. when you have a, a villain that is a little bit more um, interesting, you know, it's yeah. just a better told story, I think. I mean, you even you brought up psychopaths. I mean, f- folks are even loving the Joker, <laughs> who yeah. was an infamous psychopath. So, like, people can be swayed, you know, by any turn of events. And I, yeah. I do think there's going to be a point where fans start to get on uh, uh, the the Burt uh, uh, w- the wagon because she's not actually doing anything wrong here. Persistence no, isn't illegal. <laughs> no, persistence isn't illegal. She is just, you know, she should she should stop. But she's yeah. not doing the thing that she should be doing. She's doing yeah. the thing that she feels very passionate about that she wants to do. And that is annoying. She's the bad guy on this show. Like, there has to be a bad guy to, on any show in any movie. They need to do the cat and mouse game. They need to have someone who's running, someone who's chasing. So yeah. I happen, she happens to be the one who's chasing. And people aren't going to like that because people want want the um, Howard family to, to win. And so, yeah. um, and succeed. So... 
obviously there's always going to be those characters. They have, they have to be there. Yeah. But I'm glad that they did decide to make Shannon, you know, the second season, we see a little bit more of who Shannon is. So it's just not only annoying, but if people, and if people start liking her, then great. People still hate her. Then (laughs) <laughs> we love conflict and power so yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um so so in the finale there is a win for detective burke and that to me i feel like is the only win this entire season for her and that's juke standing up for her when juke was speaking to uh nicole's dad and basically clearing which could have been huge implications going for of just mm-hmm. You know, I, I don't know if they want to label it sexual misconduct or minor misconduct, whatever it may have been. But Juke said, hey, listen, Nicole Death is is on me. It's, it's, mm-hmm. it's not on her. And whatever you all are trying to compile on Detective Burke, it's not on her, which is the win um, that I did not see coming. Could you could you talk a little bit about that relationship with uh, and, and how you sort of could, uh, you know, describe the relationship between Detective Burke and Juke uh, throughout this season? Mm hmm. I mean, talk about making a really bad person likable. Like the Jew character in the original Power series is just um, like a total Menacing. villain. Yeah. And so, seeing that when she was younger, she has this, she has that, she had that moment of vulnerability and heart where she's not just only. And I think that's why Raising Canaan is so interesting, is we get to see all of the backstory for these characters that are so evil later on, and you yeah. understand that they are human and. Um, they sometimes just like become that way because of various things that happen in their life and because they have emotions. So I love that scene with Juke and Haley is just such a freaking good actor and watching her in that scene, I, you see the real heart of Juke and you see it with Kanan and you see it with her dad sometimes, but this is her with a stranger that's not, she's not blood related to and she's sticking her neck out on the line for her. Yeah. And I think it shows that, you don't really see much of it in season two, but there is a deep connection between Shannon and Juke. I think because in this moment that Juke was really struggling after Nicole's death, they have this connection and she she can kind of, she, she, know, she has this person unspoken sometimes, but like she knows that she ha- may have her back. And yeah, of course I ask her a favor the last, you know, at the very end, but there is some sort of connection between them that's undeniable. Yeah. And um, again, even though we don't see it much in season two, it's always it's always going to be there. I think that I think that Shannon just sees sees um, maybe a little bit of herself in Juke, mm-hmm. in the young Juke, and um, but also just likes Jukebox and sees like a potential in her, and so uh, she just can't she just won't let it go. And and um, it's fun it's fun to watch. And I love Haley; like we're great friends. So doing these scenes with her, I, I maybe hopefully it comes across like our personal affection for each other. And I think that also helps support their relationship in the show as well. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I can, I can, I can totally see and, and understand a lot of that. I, <laughs> I, and you know, it, it, it's, it's very interesting to think the possibilities going forward, because again, we, we know where Juke's story ends and, and, and we see this bond and, and maybe there's a little bit of a safe space between the two of them. I, I again, I think there's a, a unspoken level of loyalty there. I mean, Juke could never, Juke don't like the feds. She makes it very clear, but I think she sort of looks at Burke in another light at times. And obviously you know, being able to have somebody who understands uh, sexuality in the same capacity that she does and and, and obviously um, the world around the two of them and how mm-hmm. that's not really acceptable. And I think that, you know, that's still a lot of what speaks about today at times where folks, you know, trying to find safe spaces to express their, their feelings, their sexualities and, and stuff without the dangers around them. And that, that I, I, truly feel will be a factor going forward yeah and it bonds people i think more than you know at that time and be them being closer close in age it it does bond them in in some ways um uh and also i think that she she doesn't have a an affection for detective shannon burke she has uh if i mean i say affection that's not probably not the right word but she has she likes shannon burke yeah, I don't think she necessarily likes Detective Shannon Burke, but she and Shannon have a personal thing that's, I think that she can maybe separate from the job of yeah. Shan- Shannon. So, yeah, like I just really enjoy the relationship. Um, 
even though it's, you know, not been talked about much in season two, but uh, yeah. it's really sweet. Yeah, I absolutely expect a lot more of that going forward. I think that's why they, in the finale, the finale had a lot of little tidbits of things I think they're going to explore on. Um, and I think that was definitely a scene and why that scene was the way it was because of the ramifications possibly going forward. Um, another scene with you, and and I want to compile a couple of different things in this. Uh, also, shout out to Makai, who just had a birthday, which I also yes. said that. You said that you your ultimate wish would also to have your birthday at Top Golf. I Explain did. Oh, this. you saw that. Well, yeah. I've never been to Top Golf, so I I just have this like, I just like want to hit things, you know. <laughs> and uh, I feel like <laughs> that would be really fun to hit things um, into like I don't know to tar into targets or like just into the air. I just want to like yeah. whack them. Um, yeah. That and I, I've never been to, I don't know. I, I think of Top Golf as this just, I, I like it's like Disney World in my head. I, I've never been there. I don't know what it is, but yeah, I couldn't go to Makai's birthday. Uh, I saw him last night though. Um, uh, yeah, he, he's he's great. And that scene was so fun. We don't get many scenes. I think that was like one of the only scenes that we have together, him, mm -hmm. him and I. And he's just so fun. And even though that scene was not fun, it was. You wouldn't, I think that you wouldn't really know that we were filming a dramatic scene between the shots because <laughs> I'm just joking around. What was fun this last season is that I think I got a scene with almost every single character, like uh, one on one. I had uh, Raqu I had Raquel. I had yep. um, a scene with Joey. I had a scene with um, Symphony. I had scenes with Haley, with Omar. With I got I didn't get scenes with um, Mal uh, Lulu or Lulu. Marvin, mm -hmm. which is like. Uh, which I was like, if I could just check all of them off in season two, <laughs> in season two, that'd be great. But uh, that was really, really fun. Getting to work with everyone one on one was like very, very cool. I really enjoyed that this season. Did Did you do your own stunts here when you got pushed to the ground? You know, I I do credit myself as being a good faller. I fall quite a lot, so I am very good good at that. But they had a stunt, a lovely stunt double for me. Uh, who did the fall for me because, you know, they kept saying, you're going to have to do this like 10 times. So <laughs> we don't want you to get hurt. I'm like, I do that 10 times during the day. <laughs> yeah. And, and and the reason I bring up the scene is because I thought this was a little bit of a turn of the page for Detective Burke. So a little bit of anger mm -hmm. in a way I don't think we've seen, you know, and I, I, let's, let's call it what it is. It's been an emotional ride, this, this finale yeah. here from being scolded to to losing Sam, who obviously could have been very very pivotal to in in, in the um in the case she's trying to build, mm -hmm. to the point of rolling up on Kane and he's talking back, and obviously there's a little bit of a chess game or maybe maybe a little bit of a poker game, not knowing who got what in their hand. Yeah. Um. And 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 then eventually he runs off and he pushes her. Looks to be of some regret there. And then she screams in rage there, which is a sign of her. We have not seen things are starting to get uncanned here. Yeah. I think unraveling too. You, you, I mean, you get pushed to the edge. So, so, or you get pushed so far sometimes. And when you just keep hearing no and no and no and stay in your lane, stay in your lane. And you, you have it, you have the final puzzle piece right in front of you. Uh, she cracks. She she finally cracks this after the season long of asking these questions. She finally got her answer, I think, in that scene. It's how I saw it, and uh, mm. she finally hits her limit where yeah. she she cracks. And then you know she's I think the interesting thing she started doing this because she knew that she was in the pursuit of the morally right thing. But then at that moment, you see it turn, and and halfway through the season, she starts doing not not playing by the books anymore and and doing things uh uh not following the rules anymore so she's even betraying her own self so yeah i think her her journey this season has been really interesting and seeing where it ends up is was very satisfying <laughs> yeah. she she just totally broke <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. So my, my last two questions for you is, uh, number one, um, you know, everyone got their perception of who this character is. But if there's something you really wanted to say to the audience and to the fans that you wanted them to really understand or to see or things folks may not have picked up on about her, uh, what would it be? I mean, I think we've already kind of talked about that. I think I really wanted to uh, talk about how 
she is a human and she's not just doing this for this for the sake of being right it started out you know in the way of her wanting to make sure that her partner wasn't doing anything shady and then fi- kind of feeling that there was something shady going on and trying to figure out what that is but then it became about proving herself and and um proving herself to her boss to her dad to her you know mm-hmm. who has always put her in this box and told her to sit down and shut up. And I think that anyone can sort of understand that pursuit. Um, so uh, I just wanted people to, uh, you know, understand a little bit more about Shannon and not just uh, think that she's the uh, annoying detective on the show. The next iteration of all of the annoying <laughs> all of cops. The other ones. About- yeah, I know. <laughs> people are like, yeah, it's so funny in my DMs. People are like, is she worse than sex or is she worse than Blanca? Like, let's rate how bad they are. <laughs> and 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 my my theories here is that you know all of the power writers they've seen the other power shows uh, to some extent, mm-hmm. uh, whether they were just huge fans or maybe they just wanted to go check it out, you know, to to kind of really be immersed in, into the 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 community. And no one's going to sit back and say, "I really like that Cooper Sacks character." Let yeah. me do the second version of it. Yeah, let me just do it again. Oh, I love Blanca. Let's let's do Blanca again. That's a great idea. So you have to think, folks, here. I know we're getting signs of these other characters, but this, there's no way the story plans out the same way. It just it's not possible. It's not it's not logical. And you have to, as I always try to do, you have to credit the writers uh, for getting us this far in the season two. I believe season three. We know season three has been filming. Not sure where the status of where that we all want it right now, but we're going out the way. But, you know, it, it, you have to think that like, hey, there's there's a much like a good a good person. You know, you want to emotionally connect that person so that you could be yanked into what becomes the savage of Juke and Kanan that we know down the line. So yeah. maybe this is the same tactic. Maybe they want us to come in hating Bert. So at some point yeah. we can sit back and say, you know what, dad, mm-hmm. I judged the book by his cover. I was all wrong here. Yeah. And, I will say the power writers are very good at um, when you least expect something, especially on this show, when you least expect something to happen, it happens. And so I think that if you think that something is going to be happening, um, you're wrong. Like you just (laughs) never, you really never, never will know for sure what's going to happen. And I see all these predictions you know, that people talk about. And it's so hilarious to just sit and w- watch them and um, to just know that the le- the thing that you last expect to happen is the thing that happens usually, yeah. usually with this show. So, yeah. yeah, I think they've done a great job. So my, my, my last question, which is a 1A and 1B, because folks are just going to just ridicule me if I if I don't ask. And please, <laughs> by all means, I, this, this first one's just so ridiculous. And I, I expect you to do nothing but laugh. Uh, do you know who Breeze is? Breeze? <laughs> Breeze. That's all folks care about. A character Breeze, the one who see exactly. And all everybody was talking about who's Breeze, everybody. Breeze is this character that's supposed to be introduced at some point, the one who who Kanan uh learned uh the game from and who oh. Tommy and goes. Yeah, that's all who's Breeze. Right now, everybody's like, oh, it's famous. Hell, at this point, it might as well be you. Maybe you're Breeze and not trying to tell us. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. Yes. Maybe. Maybe. I will say the writers do also a very good job at keeping even the actors in the dark about a lot of things because yep. they want to still be ch- moving things around and changing things. So, yep. like. There you go, folks. See? The, I, I asked. Leave me alone. And, for the fu- <laughs> <laughs> and you thought you could get it out of me. Oh, goodness. Am I that <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these people, man. And then for my final question, which isn't, um, you know, a spoiler. Uh, obviously, folks, check out my previous interview with Sasha Penn, uh, creator and showrunner of the show. Uh, I-, I talked about a lot of, you know, I was very lost in terms of what's next for Burke. You know, Burke, this whole season has been about her obsession with trying to pin down the shooting of uh, um, Detective Howard, who's responsible for it. And what else has happened in his past that he's kind of covering up? She's into all of that and and it's, you know, variations of things around that and whatnot. And I said, are we getting more of that next season? Because like a lot of other characters, we got sort of a, you know, the, the their, their character art for the season kind of had some bit of a resolution, but also a little bit of, you know, projecting as to where they're going to go forward. But Berg, we was kind of like, we didn't really get anything like, you know, we got, she tried to get Kanan and it didn't work. And she stood there and was mad and was like, 
All right. Well, I expect her season three to come back and still be mad to go out there. But because he's the showrunner and creator, of course, he's going to have a sophisticated answer that really started to get gears turning. Hey, folks, there's a, a lot of Italians dead in places they shouldn't be dead at. Mm-hmm. she's still a cop she's still a detective mm-hmm. this ain't right mm-hmm. and not to mention this is a vet there's a crime scene at uh a, a, a house <laughs> a particular house of interest here mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and you know who's going to be on the scene so uh for for me and obviously and 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 in all confidentiality and we don't want stars mad and we don't want any of that type <laughs> of stuff what might you be able to say uh in terms of where do we see Burke going for and if you just don't have an answer here what what do you think you want Burke to go next season oh gosh well I think that um next uh, season three we we see you know season two Shannon's kind of asking a lot of questions and everyone's telling her to sit down all this stuff season and everyone is like you can't keep doing this without any consequences season three we see her dealing with the consequences of the questions that she was asking in season two. And um, you do see, you know, a little bit of a resolution with um, some of these, some of the dust that she kicked up in season two. Oh, I guess, I guess I could, I can say, yeah, that. I can say that. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's yeah. Um, and yeah, you're right. There is a, there is a huge crime scene that is left from the finale and Burke is a detective. So she's going to, she's going to detect. <laughs> <laughs> right on the doorstep of the Thomas's house. Oh, what a time. Mm-hmm. I know that last shot is so good. Yes, it is. Getting together. It's so good. Yes, it is. Well, Shanley, um, again, um, you know, I am just, I, I want to make sure I give you your flowers, your work on this show um, and, and your career in general. Uh, fantastic. Really, really, really cannot wait to consume more Detective Burke. I love the fact that everybody hates Detective Burke because I love a good villain. God, I love yeah, a good too. villain. Because nothing too. else works if there isn't a good villain, folks. So yep. um and 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 that you're sitting on a on a on a on the top of the throne here and all of the villains in power <laughs> right mm-hmm. now. Yeah. You know, oh, really? it's, <laughs> it's gotta be a it's gotta be an amazing feeling and season three cannot wait till we could get there and obviously we hopefully we get a chance to talk again on that note yeah. as we go into season three and i will end up hopefully getting to watch a few episodes and i won't get you in this situation of like wait what, what are you talking about again <laughs> yeah exactly i'm gonna have to like t- watch it with you and be like so he's got the hookup but i d- but i don't know what's going on uh yeah 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 i can't wait i can't wait for you to see season three it's gonna be amazing that's awesome. That's awesome. Folks, uh, definitely show Shanley some love, uh, whether you love or hate Burt. And remember <laughs> your answer right now if you love or hate Burt, because I have a feeling season three, that opinion will be changed. So just remember how you were now, because I don't want to hear anybody in season three talk about I'm team Burt. No, you wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> we got receipts and DMs, folks. We have receipts. <laughs> I do. I do. <laughs> But Shelly, it's been a pleasure to talk to you today. And uh, so folks, fun. check out season two of Raising Cane and all available now on the Stars app as we get ready for season three sometime soon. We don't know yet, but sometime soon. So we'll be talking then. Thank you so much for tuning in, everybody, today. And we see you back around for much more power content.